In a true democracy, it is always imperative to have checks and balances that inform the reason for the creation of the three arms of government, the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. The Film and Video Censorship Department of the Ministry of Information and Communication Strategy, Anambra State, had a peep into the activities of the legislature, that is, the 6th Assembly of the Anambra State House of Assembly. When asked what landmark laws and bills they've passed so far, the Speaker, Right Honorable Barrister Rita Madragu, and other members of the House had this to say. We have the Anambra State Group Vigilante Law, we have a Housing Development Corporation Bill. We have a Tourism and Hospitality Bill. We have the uh, Appropriation Bill 2016. We have the Mission Schools Nursing and Midwifery Bill. We have the Aswama Bill. We have the Physical Planning Bill. Order of Precedence of Public Order Bill. One in Ambrose Assembly will have passed so many bills into law. And uh, the one that strikes me most is one that has to do with the health of our people which we call the health insurance bill we are passing to law. It's very, very vital to the health being, you know, well-being of our people because with that law in existence and the board already set in place, our people that lack the money to treat themselves when they are sick, they can now afford to go to hospital and get treated without any doctor demanding for deposit or whatever. Another one that also helps the government of Anambra State is what we call the revenue court bill which are passed into law already, enabling the government to recover any revenue they are entitled to, complain that people to pay money, to pay their levies and their taxes as at when due. That will enable the government to provide the amenities they need. Because if you don't pay your taxes and your levies as at when due, government will not have the money to provide the amenities that we need for our own well-being. So I thank you for this opportunity. We recently, just a few weeks ago, we worked on an anti-open grazing law with respect to uh, the effects of the Fulani headsmen in another state. As also someone that believes in gender equality, we've done laws you know, that uh, promote equality of women in our state. Uh, that was uh, last year. Uh, we did that law. The essence of the law is to give women the rights they deserve in our society, you know, to make sure that women are not victimized. There is this one also that I'm doing. Uh, that one is uh, Anambra State's infrastructure development law. The essence of that law is to make sure that most of um, the Anambra State infrastructure development, you know, uh, like um, electricity, uh, uh, transformers, all these things are being managed presently by the state government. When there is loss of any of these uh, uh, vandalization of transformers, for instance, instance, the state government takes care of it. But now we're saying no, that this thing should go down to the, the communities via the PGs and town unions because there, that is where most of these things have been situated. So when a transformer is being vandalized, it is the responsibility of that town union you know, through the PG and the EBO to make sure that they get the corporate. There are so many. Uh, one of my best is uh, the one um, on uh, reducing the cost of burial. It's one of the best because um, it's grassroots oriented. It has a lot of human face because it's it cut across all the poor. It's not like other laws are not for everybody, but uh, this has uh, already eaten deep into our system and bastardizing the system of court. We made a bill about a um, mobile court that we passed recently. The mobile court is for the Tax people to work efficiently. We have uh, passed uh, a law establishing uh, uh, an Ambra State Polytechnic, Mbabo. Also, we passed, um, we amended the law that changed the Anambra State University to Mekko Ademegu University. 
we passed the law establishing a, a child brigade and um, we are on a gaming bill right now which have gone uh, through second reading and uh, also we hope to pass it maybe next week. Outside lawmaking, what other achievements have you recorded and they reacted this way? We have actually achieved a lot. We have uh, contributed immensely towards the overall development of the state and the well-being of the citizen by first maintaining peace and order and uh, having a conducive atmosphere you know, for the government to be able to work on. The honourable members have remained focused and committed to their responsibilities and have shown acts of practices, you know, capable of overheating the quality system in the state. So in that area, we've really done very well, making sure that we are stable, making sure that the governor, we allow the governor, you know, giving him a good environment to be able to work. Because if there's no peace at, uh, by, uh, through this, our other arm of government, that is legislature, the executive cannot really perform. They can't. So if there is no peace, the if there is no peace in legislature, the executive will not have uh, will not be able to do well. So we've been able to do that by making sure that there's an enabling environment for them to work. As a as a collectively as a house, we have been able to through our motions, you know, compel the government to do the needful for our people. You know, when it talks about roads construction. Sometimes you see some roads that are not good, or maybe people have, you know, there are some roads that are not uh, passable anymore. Through the motions we do in the House of Assembly, we draw the attention of the government to those, to those roads, and they will end up doing it. Some, some communities also that suffer from erosion menace, you know, through the motions we do here, we draw the attention of government to those areas to make sure that they are done. Even through our motion, we also sensitize our people, the Indian Ambara, to the things that, you know, concern the things that are going on in the society. Like the, the, the cattle colony, colony uh, the idea that came up from the federal government. Here in our assembly, we destroyed that thing, we, you know, we condemned it, and the world heard our voice. As the representative of the people, you present their interest to the government. During budget drafting, you visit the MDAs and then you are wait for them at the State House of Assembly when they come for budget defense. And then you make sure that all those things that you ask them or you told them, all the information you get from your people, that you transmitted to the executive so that they will enshrine it in the budget, you make sure that they are there. Then also, we help our people in so many ways. We help those that have not gotten a job, you know, facilitating to get a job and others and that's why I say that we are not only lawmakers we are represent we represent the people so as the representative of the people you do so many things for them the legislature is a different arm of the government it's a different arm of the government executive judiciary but despite that independency we are interdependent in our number of states. What am I trying to say? We have a good relationship with the executive, evidenced by the laws, the bills we enact here, that finally you know, signed into law, evidenced by the motions we sponsor here, evidenced by even our budget bilateral interactive section to defense. We've been able to identify that most of the key area priorities of the state government are reflected in the government. The legislators also have oversight functions as part of their job. Hear them. We have House of Assembly in miniature. The little House of Assembly that the committees. So and then most of us are the chairman of various committees. So they carry out their oversight function. For example, the committee on work, if there is any road in Anambra State here going on, they oversight it to make sure that all the necessary things that are in the contract are being executed. 
So, that's part of our job, the oversight function. And Anambra State House of Assembly are very good in doing that. And I also thank His Excellency Chief Dr. Willie Odiano for encouraging us because it's the outcome of all this our oversight that helps him to do his job. The will it is working is because House of Assembly is doing well. Most of the committees um, are always on their oversight for Mr. Long on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, that is when we don't normally sit. And um, on my own part as the Chairman Committee on Agriculture, I think uh, we have done a series of, uh, of uh, oversight functions, fully aware that uh, the, the Governor of the state pays more attention in uh, agricultural development of the state. And uh, we, have visited, uh, we have visited a lot of uh, projects um, in Aya, Melum, in Aguaru, Iyala, Columba and all come out. Um, we've actually been working with Ministry of Agri and different programs they have going to about the value chain. We've done a lot of uh, oversight functions on the projects of the value chain. We have equally also embarked on oversight functions of various uh, Fadama, Fadama projects within the states. Um, presently, the value chain is doing well in IML because before now they were doing one sitting farming in rice production. But in the sometime last year, the, the farmers there testified when we went there they are doing two sitting farming. That means increasing the capacity of their production for a year. And we have also went to the when uh, visited the value chain site in Okanot. Um, I think they are doing well also there. It's one of the major laws, one of the major functions of House of Assembly members is the oversight function. And uh, after passing the budget, because the budget is where we provide money for the ministries and the governors to work. And after uh, the passing of this budget, if you did not oversight it, you will not know what is going on. Because after knowing the amount of, you gave to the different ministries, you have to go and see if those ministries utilize those money very well. It's very important. So this house is carrying out that function very efficiently. And again, we go to the field to see the contractors. Like I am chairman works committee. I have to go to the field. I see the contractors. I look at the road, the thickness of the road, the gutter, and the nature of everything so that we make sure the money allocated to them are used for the work that are allocated for. They also touch the lives of the members of their constituencies through constituency projects. Personally, in my own constituency, I've touched virtually all the communities. I have seven communities in my constituency. I have Uni, Bama, Isiago, Mbauku, Mwaolo, and Nise. And I've done one project or the other throughout the entire communities. So the dividend of democracy, I'm giving them as I was given. I don't hide anything. Once it is approved and I receive the cash, I move on. I know like now I'm going in Bakuna. Mbaku should be the next the next town because I have not done I've done something but uh, not, not to my satisfaction. So I still need to go there. And final final home which is my own town because I I asked them to, to please be patient with me because I have to satisfy the outsiders because they have they are the people that have voted me into power. I know charity begins at you, but in this regard, uh, the reverse is the case because we are begging them. I'm from Omaha, so and they agree with me. Before I leave, or maybe but before June next year, I must do something remarkable in my community. I have uh, visited some of our colleagues, being part of their you know, commissioning of their projects. I will tell you that uh, this six assembly are very serious, committed people. In my constituency, for instance, I have a, a, a scholarship uh, board uh, that oversees the constituencies. Uh, to the glory of God, I have about 320 
people and my scholarship uh, uh, foundation in my you know both primary secondary and tertiary institutions uh, that God has really helped us in terms of that now infrastructures have been able to as you know uh, provide pipe bomb waters for a lot of people boreholes you know in different communities that the whole communities that I represent can point to the fact that this is what uh, Ifedorama has done in their town and in their communities. Uh, in, in health, we have been able to help out with the health in Enugu Agede, in Enofia, in Enugu, as you know, with you know structures that you can see expanding some of their maternity wards, you know, uh, to give more room and all of that. In the schools, we've been, I have been able to uh, set up a laboratory at GTC in, in Wagiri, for instance. They have no functional physics and chemistry uh, laboratory when I came. The house was dilapidated and all of that. You know, I came and uh, re remodeled the, uh, the laboratory and not just remodeling the physical building, but I was able to equip it with uh, science laboratory equipment, which the students are enjoying. You know, when you talk about conspiracy projects, I think um, it's an, an instrument which uh, most members use to get closer to the grassroots. And uh, personally, personally, I actually interacted uh, with my constituents to actually know the basic needs they need and uh, we started well even providing school building providing boreholes because you know my constituencies are on the river band and the, uh, the most essential need for my people is water and I think um, apart from that we are trying we have done a lot of uh, youth empowerment programs to encourage the youth go back to farming and from the results we are getting, I think they are doing well. But we will probably encourage our women who are into farming to actually pay attention because you know there is no other way we can survive without agriculture. So uh, basically, the 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 constituency projects personally have set in place are doing well. Um, presently. Presently, presently, we are doing a health center in the year or whatever, and um, just last week we flagged up six boreholes, six bowl for six communities and my constituency. So, so far, so good, we are doing well. For any government to function effectively and perform her statutory and other functions without hitches, there is need for a cordial relationship between the three arms of government. Honestly, I can tell you that there is it's very, very cordial because there's a synergy between the executive and the legislature and also the judiciary. Because these three arms must work together for the state to move forward. If there's no synergy, if there's no cordial relationship, it's not what you experience that you experience. You may never be able to come here to come and see and know how we are faring. So there is a serious cordial relationship, there's synergy, serious one, that's making things, you know, work. That's the magic other people are seeing in, my, in our state. And that's why I can beat my chest to say Anambra is doing well, because I know that we are actually doing well, we are working together. It has been wonderful, the synergy is so cordial. That is why we need to work it. When the executive and the the legislators are not working cordially now. Nothing will go. But you can see the synergy with the executive and the legislators, especially this assembly. They work hand in hand. A very good cordial relationship between the two. Our relationship with the executive and even judiciary is superbly cordial. It's not just that it's cordial. We synergize. We synergize because the three arms have good understanding, because they have a goal. The executive comes out with their proposals. And most times, of course, like a, a, a budget proposal and some appeals. And uh, when we look at them, we see that they have uh, their quality. And then 
we diagnose them and give them teeth by passing them into law. So, um, we synergize with the system, our relationship, so that we, we leverage on the quality performance of His Excellency. And uh, we notice that the, 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 the His Excellency is quite transparent, and uh, as with that level of transparency, we are comfortable, and then, uh, of course, the oversight function is a lot easier. And he's happy when we are doing the oversight function, he doesn't feel that we are doing them or doing our necessary investigation. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, uh, our constitutional duties to do. Section one, two, three. Is very constitutional. Our relation is very cordial. It's cordial in the sense that we are doing it in such a way that Anambra have to move forward. But there are places we don't agree with the executives. When things are going wrong, because if you agree with everything they are doing, which means we are not doing our work. Our work is to oversight and see that they are doing the right work they're supposed to be doing. So there are places we are disagree to agree. After disagreeing, governor see the side of it and later we come and we agree. We, we, you, maybe you, since this is our tenor started, we have not had any major issues or differences with the executive. Not that because we don't agree, but we disagree. But we agree in the house because after seeing the interests of the state, we follow the right way. Even the governor, if he see that this is the right thing that's supposed to be done, he goes with the um, House of Assembly and legislators. So that's how it's working. But the executive is an arm of the government, and uh, we have enjoyed a very smooth relationship with this present government. This sixth assembly had uh, worked, you know, assiduously and very, very cordially with the executive, uh, the present executive, and uh, our relationship has been very smooth, I must tell you. And of course, uh, we uh, have been adjudged one of the best legislative uh, house, you know, with very good uh, cooperation with the executive in the entire state. For some time now, there has been a debate on the autonomy of the state houses of assembly. We voted we, uh, like when the bill was brought, we unanimously approved it. So we have done much. The much we can do as a, a house, we've done that, and we've also transmitted to the state, uh, to the federal house. From there, it will now go to the president for assent. So all things being equal, it should fly because we have more than two third of the state who voted for um, house autonomy. It is for good, it is, it is for all of us now, the benefit of all of us. You know, when the house are in the mercy of the governor, you know, things will not go, go well. Like when the house is on, on its own, as we are trying to be now, we have passed the law, we have okayed it in the sister assembly here, we have passed the autonomy of the house. We have passed autonomy of the house. And you know, when, when the house is on its own, there will be checks and balances. That is the essence of the leadership. There must be checks and balances. But when the house is not autonomy, the house is in the nature of the governor. But before you do anything, you can beg. Subject to governor's approval. It will not work well, but when the house is on their own, when the house got their autonomy, you can see the house, you can see how legislation, how vibrant everybody are. We have vibrant legislature, but we cannot know it because um, there are things you do not say or do not do. But when the house is uh, on their own, we have the autonomy. Other people will benefit because you can see quality representation. And we in the House of Sambra State, we have already endorsed it. We have given our approval, our consent to it, that it should go on. Presently, in Ambrose Assembly, very soon, we are going to pass our own law here, House of Assembly Service Commission. Bill. We're going to pass it into law to enable House of Assembly Member State become autonomy, become self, you know, self independence. You know, we employ our own staffs. We also do our th things without looking for executive or maybe you know, uh, waiting for them to do it to do them for us. So that House of Assembly Member State will be on the first line charge when it comes to disbursement, when it comes to appropriation. Every money due to House of Assembly will come to House of Assembly. In that way, the House will be independent in ensuring that they checkmate the executive and judiciary 
reforming their constitutional duties. The House of Assembly uh, Financial Autonomy has scaled every odd. Now they have transmitted it to His Excellency the President. That's what I was informed because we have transmitted our own to the National Assembly. We're supposed to transmit it to the executive body for assent. So we are waiting for it. His Excellency Chief Willie Madabrochuku Obiano has presented his 2018 budget and the House graciously passed the budget. But how realistic is the budget? And we believe that this year's budget, we're going to have at least nothing less than 90 or 95 percent implementation is realizable because we have looked at it, the projections, the estimates they brought, we know that it's achievable. Anambra State House of Assembly is indeed delivering on its mandate to make quality laws, perform its oversight functions, make dividends of democracy get to the grassroots through their constituency projects and also working hand in hand with the executive in making Anambra State great. Anambra State, the light of the nation.